Today on the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast, we're going to be talking about the Marvels and what all you guys have been saying about it. Finally, we get to talk about the feedback for the Marvels. All that right after this. Welcome to the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast. My name is Matthew Carroll. And I'm Ashley Coffin. Ashley, what has been going on, my friend? Oh, you know, just feel like a, a first week without Marvel, it's been a little sad. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, we're still living that high. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I am. I'm feeling really good about where Marvel is after these that big day, which, which like I've talked about, I know there's a lot of negative things floating around about Marvel, but like I just feel like they did a really good job with those two properties, and that's all that really matters. You just make good yeah. things and make them interconnected. And then your your franchise will continue to be strong. It's just that when you have a few misses and it's not connected well, then it yeah. And we're finally getting some really strong connection with the Marvels. Um, mm-hmm. Still some questions. Still things I want to I want to come back. But like we're getting some good co- good connections, which maybe we'll have lots of feedback about that. Yeah, it was crazy. the The box office did not do so great, but uh, yeah, it's hard to to like. Choose, pick and choose like that Barbenheimer thing that was weird that was like a weird thing to happen and everybody oh, yeah. got real hyped about it and those movies made a ton of money but even before that people weren't like showing up I, I have a feeling people will show up big time for like Dune but I don't know I think like the time of the movies is, is starting to be over I, I don't know I, I think that's like people have to get used to going to the movies again like since COVID, people got used to like I just want to do everything at home. People go mm-hmm. go to restaurants less. People like everything out in the world is down right now, and I don't think it's really good for us as humans. Like I think we need to be like out of our house doing things. Um, mm-hmm. I say that as someone who bought a house and now I never want to leave. Like, uh... <laughs> well, that's the thing. Once they made TVs really awesome and mm-hmm. surround sound, yeah. and it's like big. It's real. I am like killing killing of the flower moon. I would really wanted to go see that movie. I don't want to sit in the movie theaters for three hours unless it's a Marvel movie. Sorry, Scorsese. But, you know, like, that's just how I feel about it, especially, like, a drama like that. I want to watch that at home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I get Napoleon. it. Napoleon. Oh, I really want to see Napoleon. It looks mm-hmm. good. It's this Thursday, right? It's out, like, yeah. two days. I might, I might have to see that. Maybe we'll do it on multi horse reviews because I really do want to see that. It looks really good. And, uh... It, Sorry, we do it. We Multiverse News, our show, we've been doing uh, whenever there's something that doesn't fit into anything and it's not like a series, we've just been doing an episode about it. Like that if it seems like newsworthy or whatever, uh, calling it <laughs> Multiverse Reviews. Um, so we did we did Killers of the Fire Moon and um, one of the other ones that came out that I, I was on and I'm spacing. Um, <laughs> Stealing from Bingers, man. <laughs> well, Bingers is like the series thing. We don't really do those kinds of movies, like sort of prestige drama stuff. We don't really do on Bingers. Bingers has always been like kind of series and like pop culture kind of stuff. So <laughs> thought it was a very different thing. Oh, but uh, one of the reasons I really I would like to cover it over there after Jay sees it because Jay's like a history teacher, and so he's always mm-hmm. like wanted to talk about uh, some of the historical stuff. So that'll oh, be fun. he's not going to be happy. <laughs> oh, they they like drastically change stuff. I guess they change stuff, but he never. I mean. Ridley Scott told people to go like screw themselves if they have a problem with it because it's not, you know, he's like, we're, if you want things to be historically accurate, go read a history book, he said. (laughs) Yes. It's weird because like I get why people would want it to be because Napoleon is a story that I feel like we haven't had on screen enough that like the mo- whatever he makes in this movie is going to be the way people think about whatever happened forever. Like for a mm. long time, it's going to be like, I mean, obviously people will be inspired by the movie to go like dig into the history, but other people are just going to watch that. And that will be their picture of what the Napoleon thing was like forever. You know? Yeah. I, I definitely have my v- visions of the past built by movies, you know? Mm-hmm. So, uh, I, but I get it from really Scott. Like I'm just making a movie. Like, like I'm, yeah. I'm not, it's not my responsibility. <laughs> But then it's like, it's also, that's the effect you're going to have. Like, I don't know what to say. Yeah. Anyway, let's get to the Marvel. Let's talk about what people are talking about. Let's get to it. You ready? I'm ready. Woo! Alyssa Jane Haynes, one of our patrons, says, The Marvels was so fun. Mon Valani is a treasure. Uh, feeling excited about the future of the multiverse saga. What a great weekend for MCU fans. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. 
And and that's I was going to say this uh, when you brought up the box office failings of the Marvels thus far. Um, worst, uh, isn't it the worst it's ever? The worst, the worst well, we've ever also, had in the MCU. It was like almost three hundred million to make. Like maybe that's what they need to start looking at. Is you know? Oh yeah, need to start cutting some corners there, Marvel. Well, not even cutting corners. They need to start doing proper pre-production. Like we, we've been covering it a lot. Uh, because this is such a big story with like the reign of the MCU, that book and stuff. We've been talking about it a lot on, on Multiverse News, but like the idea that like Marvel has been for a long time relying on because they want the connectivity to stay tight and they want to do interesting things, they wait and they make really last minute script changes. And so, except for people like James Gunn, who's like, no, I'm going to write a script. Like, they've right. just been like going into production. And this even happened on Iron Man. So, this isn't new. This isn't like the fall of Marvel. This is like what Marvel's been doing since the beginning. They went into the production of Iron Man with like no script. Like, <laughs> they, they like threw out the script the first week and they just like yeah. improvised That's half Favreau. the movie. Yeah, that's favorite for you. Yeah, geniuses. <laughs> Absolutely, and I think it's super cool. And if you can pull it off, but um, when you get these big spectacle movies and you have all this post production and visualization, and then you have to change it last minute, you don't have time to properly do some of the things they're trying to do. So I think like going back to like. Finding the middle point, like the Favreau thing. It's like, yeah, he did that, but he was doing a lot of practical stuff. You know what I mean? So, yep. like, you can't have that, like, no script thing and also make everything a big CGI party. Because then you're just, like, your your CGI is not going to keep up. It's going to be bad. Your yeah. The effects in the movie are going to be bad. So, like, I think and – the, and the cost just goes up and up and up when you make those changes. So, I, I think they could make these movies a lot cheaper if they just – Got back to that original Iron Man and like do stuff practically, like mm -hmm. use the CGI when it's needed, plan the CGI shots well, have a script. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's why horror movies have been cleaning up at the box office over the last couple months because it's not as much money to make. Yeah. Know, the horror movies. And then people are turning out to see them. Like, I'm right. instead of going to see Napoleon, we're going to see Thanksgiving, uh, Eli Ross Thanksgiving on Friday. Because we're reviewing it on the, the show, obviously, but it's like, yeah, that's already trajected to do really well, so we'll see what happens. Well, the thing about the theatrical experience is it needs to be an experience, and a big part of what Marvel has been able to capitalize on these last few years is the experience is the entirety of the culture, and, and that, that's not true, but like, you know, whatever, 40%, I don't, I don't know the numbers, but a large percentage of people are going to see that movie on opening weekend. So, like, mm -hmm. it's going to be in the conversation. A lot of your friends and a lot of your family and a lot of your people in your life, people at work, are going to be talking about this thing. And if you want to be part of the conversation, you better get there. And so, like, Marvel's been able to count on that. But the movies have become less and less uh, experiences because of what we can do at home now. You can watch right. The Boys and have a big superhero action show at, right there at, the, at, at home. You don't need... Right. Yeah. It's just different. It's just a different experience. And so they need to get back to making these movies important and make those moments important when... We talked about it a million times, but when Cat picks up Mjolnir, like, the theater goes crazy. Like, we need those moments mm -hmm. that everyone is having this big experience together. And that's why horror does so well, is because it's like, it is a communal experience that we all have. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. everybody is feeling scared together. And it's, there's nothing like, you feel out of, you can't pause it if it gets too scary. Like, you're in a theater. You know, it's just a different thing yeah. than watching it at home. Um, it's true. Yeah. Uh, but what I was going to say about the the Marvels being doing poorly is Iman Vellani. I think this movie would have done another fifty thousand dollars if Iman Vellani could have been on every show. Like Iman oh, Vellani, you mean like the night shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the fact that none of them could promote the movie before it came out. And the real bummer is if the movie had done well, Iman Vellani would have been on all the shows this week, and she has been on some. Uh, but like. It would have been a big deal. She would have been a get for all those shows because oh, this show's doing this movie's doing well, and they would have all had her, and it would have been like oh, your character's exploding, everyone loves you, and instead the narrative is like this movie did poorly. The shows don't care as much to have her as like the big star, like star of this new movie. Yeah, it's she's a shame. just so charming that I think she would have 
I I literally think she would have made fifty thousand dollars more. For, not fifty thousand, fifty million. Yeah, fifty thousand. Fifty thousand. No, that's not what I meant. I think I said fifty thousand <laughs> the first time too. I think it would have made fifty million more dollars if it like if if she'd been out there. Yeah, that, well, that's always the question because I, I don't know. I've never really thought that they have to go on those shows to promote the movies for the movies to do well. I always, you know, thought that that was kind of you know subjective, and I get a little like burnt out by. You know, like the Jimmy Fallon shows of it all when they're doing stupid, like just making oh, them yeah. do really stupid shit. And I I'm hate, like, oh, I hate, I hate God, Jimmy Fallon. This, no offense. I hate Jimmy anyone Fallon. Who, anyone who likes Jimmy Fallon, yeah, good on you. Sorry if you like him. God, good I can't, on you. But I can't he is my it. least favorite. He's Because I, I really think Tom Hiddleston was on Jimmy Fallon and so was uh, Brie Larson on the same night. And I just remember watching maybe Tom's clip, but I was just like, God, I cannot do it. I cannot do Fallon. Mm. Well, like, well, give, the, me, give me the Kimmel. I think those shows matter a lot more than you think they do. Because yeah, people go to bed every night like watching those shows, and they kind of let them know what's in the zeitgeist this week. Mm-hmm. And when those shows are on the air, like they're a huge part of why your dad knows that the Marvels is coming out, or whatever you know, like uh, why anyone's dad knows the Marvels is coming out, or mom, or whatever. Like people that aren't into it, they know those movies are coming out because of that. And and then not just like dads and moms, but obviously like anyone, the, the filthy casuals that just like show up for the movies, that's how they mm-hmm. know the movies are happening. We know because we're on a podcast and people listening to this know because we're talking about it, being excited, the hype trains are for us. But, the, but like 80% of people that were going to see these movies weren't those people. Like eight, the reason these movies were huge is because all those people that are watching the late night shows that aren't following these kinds of shows are go are, are like hearing about the movies and going, Oh, another Marvel movie's coming. They don't even know it's coming. You know, <laughs> it's, it's weird, man. Obviously advertising too, but yeah, those yeah. long form interviews, I think matter a lot to, to the, to the casuals out there. Uh, up next, uh, uh, waterfall angel. Our friend Sharon says, uh, such a fun movie with a ton of great one-liners and two killer ending scenes. My question is, do Flurkins reproduce asexually? If so, uh, do you think Goose was like, oh shit, we're going to need reinforcements, or was it all just a one-night stand and a coincidence? (laughs) Higher, further, faster, together. Sharon. I thought it said um, I thought it said higher flurkin faster at first and I liked that. Um I mean, I'm not an intergalactic veterinarian, so I really don't know. Um Me neither. That's a, that's I, a weird coincidence. I am also yeah, not that. I wasn't even thinking about it until right now. I was thinking about it, not the sexuality of the flurkin, but like I do think this was part of Goose's plan. Like I think that Goose started laying eggs because they knew something was coming. That's the way mm. I took it. I don't know. I don't okay. know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but like it seemed like the, the 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 station started falling apart. They needed a way to get off, and then all of a sudden these eggs started showing up. I was yeah. like, it felt like uh, that was an intentional thing, but I don't know. Yeah, it's a plot fixer. That's what that is. <laughs> I don't know. It depends. Like we don't know how sentient. Uh, I don't know if sentient's the right word. We don't know how intelligent the flirkin are, you know? No. Just flirkin' around. Yeah. Flirkin's such a good name for a thing. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I like the theory that, that that she knew. And that like, and I guess produces asexually, because there's not two flirkin' on the ship that we know of. But right. there could be a weird thing with like how their biology works, or how like long... It takes for gestation or something like that. So there's all Life kinds of. Life finds a way, man. Like yeah. this dinosaur this is Jurassic Park. It's fine. It's yeah. Fine. Do whatever. Do, do it. It will do whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Monvalani's parents find a way to stay in the scene, even though. Yeah. I'm like, why aren't they in a cat's sorry. stomach? Okay. I know. Ms. Marvel's parents. I just had a Monvalani's parents. Uh, <laughs> Kamala's parents. Um, Matthew Nace, another one of our patrons, says, Hey, y'all. Uh, just saw the Marvels last night with my son. Didn't realize I bought 3D until I was handed glasses. But now I guess I'm Ooh. going to have to see all 3D movies now. Ooh. Uh, what a great movie. Oh, you movie. liked it. That's, people usually don't... I can't, I can't handle it at all. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I've gotten to the point where I don't care. Like it, uh, For a little, little while, I was like, oh, I need... To, I think they... Avatar took it to this extreme, and so for a while, movies really felt like they needed to make it like a big part of it. I feel like these days, the 3D movies are like 
very subtle for the most part. They're not like doing the things in my face like as much as, and so like it doesn't give me headaches or anything like weird like that. Like it's a lot uh, subtler. See, that's what, I get the headaches, but that's why I do IMAX or bust. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Matthew continues, what a great movie and a total change up, uh, from some recent past movies with tone, but who the hell is her husband? Did I miss something? Is he a comic book character or was he literally just a random prince? Also, I loved the Voltron montages they put together. Yes, I said Voltron and not Power Rangers. <laughs> um, I was actually mad at the post credit scene because a mindless TikTok viewing is in a. in a mindless TikTok viewing. I saw it, and as soon as I heard the voice, I scrolled up. I was just hoping that it was fake what I saw, but of course not. Uh, but I did love it and pumped for future inclusion of the mutants. There should be jail time for such actions. Thanks for all the work. Yeah, man, you got to be careful on the internet. Yeah. You got to like leading up to movies. That's why I don't really TikTok. I look at TikToks that people send me. So mm -hmm. if you've gotten a TikTok from a TikTok, a TikTok from me, it's because somebody else sent it to me. I, I don't go on there and find stuff. Yeah. I just it, it can't do it. I do. I love TikTok, uh, but I, I don't, don't watch it a lot. But like when I do, I always enjoy it. Um, it's just like, it's a nice little like curated thing. For, like it's really nice to have something so curated to your taste and just be like mindlessly scroll. But it's <laughs> definitely like, it's, you know, it's, it, we had a big debate. My band was sitting around and like there were a couple like, parents and teachers in the room and stuff and like we had a big debate on whether like tiktok was destroying the youth like the the t attention oh, no. span aspect of it and like the um the fact that you mindlessly scroll you're not choosing what you want to see and like the basically the algorithm is just taking your brain and molding it you know like it's, yeah, yeah. It, like, i get it but i think it's like any other any other thing you just have to be self-controlled and like kids their parents just need to like control how much they're allowed to watch of that stuff you know like, oh if yeah you're gonna get on tiktok you need to spend a Good small luck. amount of time yeah <laughs> tiktok um yeah uh i uh do not know anything about the character from um the prince do you have you have you learned so, anything i just know that that was based off of in the comics she does go to a planet where everybody speaks in rhymes mm. but i don't think that they were i can't remember whether she was like married to that person or whatnot or i think they just wanted to put her in a fancy dress and make her a disney princess yeah it was a very you funny know? scene like mostly because she has been so serious in most of her appearances in the mcu yeah and and, and like it's clear that the two characters, Monica and uh, Kamala, both thought of her as kind of a serious character. And so to see her throw on the dress and sing and everything was just like a really, it was a fun juxtaposition and kind of gave a little depth to the character, I thought. And I'm pretty sure in Miss Marvel, when she's trying on all the different cosplay outfits to wear to whatever con or um, Avengers Day that she's going to, one of her outfits is the dress that Carol's wearing in this movie. Mm. Interesting. Cool. <laughs> I did not know that. Uh, Fashion. Yeah, rad. Uh, okay, Andre Sparks, another one of our patrons, says, Hey, Panda fam. After watching the Marvel double feature this week, uh, along with the final scene and mid credit scene of the Marvels, I was super hyped. I hope you are too. Just wanted to share some thoughts and get yours. Some people think that the movie was forgettable. I didn't think it was, this was forgettable. Um, this movie did a good job with family, mental health, and treating people as human beings and not just objects. We learn about how Carol destroying the supreme intelligence affected two alien species, her own mental state, Monica, and the universe. We saw growth from her, Monica, and Kamala. Secondly, I hear people complaining about the villain uh, i don't think she was a bad villain uh she wasn't mustache twirling she was just trying to save her people uh because of what captain marvel did i thought it made sense uh reminds me of killmonger Lastly, Ashley said this sounded like a Captain Marvel sequel, and I agree. Uh, she was the one pulling everything together. Keep up the great work, guys. Andre. Um, 
I, I will say there was problems with the villain. I mean, you can like something and still be able to point out some of the faults in it. Yeah. You can't really put her and Killmonger in the same same kind of boat, I don't think, because of... I, her people were doing some pretty h- horrible stuff, too, at that time, you know, and Carol came in there to stop it. You know, there was the war going on with the scrolls and, and uh, what are, I can't remember right now what her people are. Ronan. The Cree. The Cree, yeah. So they, they weren't doing, you know, everybody was doing some pretty bad stuff around this time. No one was, like, super innocent. Like, Killmonger, he was, like, a little kid and, you know, right. grew up like that. And, you know, you could even look at what he was doing and be like, okay, this isn't completely the worst thing, but it is still kind of bad thing to be doing. You know, I don't know. I, I don't think... I just think Killmonger was such a better villain that you can't mm. really put the two of them in the same boat. I don't know. I, I think from a, like impact perspective i think that's probably true and then for a lot of reasons i I think that like for one it's like killmonger was one of the few times where marvel took like a real life thing that is in the real world like right um the 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 like inequalities um among like the races all throughout the world and like Killmonger was a character who wanted to change that and he's right, you know, like, yeah. like that is that is so cool and interesting and like bold of Marvel to tackle that um in a way that like felt real and gave a lot of respect to that character. So I think there's like if you're talking about impact, like I think Killmonger is is a stronger villain um for for that reason and for others but I, I think mostly what Andre is defending here is people saying like, and I've been saying this for years about Ronan. Like people say Ronan's a thin villain, but like, no, no Ronan's. I didn't think so. Yeah, like, yeah, I think he's. It depends on what you mean by thin. People say that Ronan's like character doesn't make any sense, and I think that's just wrong. Like Ronan yeah. is just like a, a he's a, a a zealot, you know. Like, mm-hmm. and there's just there are zealots in the world that like yeah. believe one thing and they're gonna do that thing, and they don't care who gets hurt in the process, and they believe they're so right that they're willing to like commit atrocities. That happens in the real world. I think that Ronan is just like he's a simple villain. But he's he's played well and he's explained well, and I think the same thing is true of uh, Darbin. Mm-hmm. She was also too similar to Ronan. Like they just even down to the hammer having the same what looked like Power Stone. I, I think she was more complex. I just mean the way that she looked and everything. Yeah, sure, sure. It was sure. all pretty much the same. Yeah, it it is a little weird that she's like just a direct in a direct line from Ronan, and they do mention he, she was I, I think at one point she she says my predecessor. They don't I think say they say Ronan in the movie, right? I don't remember. So it feels weird that they didn't like hang more of a lantern on the fact that she seems like she's in it, directly in the line of the accusers or whatever. Yeah, that would have made more sense. Um, but it, but it, I think they wanted to. I wanted her to stand alone, but clearly a lot of people don't think she does. I think what's, what Andre's saying here makes sense. I don't think th- I don't think her character like doesn't make sense. Like I think she her actions make sense. They're well motivated and all that. It's just a matter of like when you talk about the strength of a villain, you want more than just like plot. Like the, the you want more than just it makes sense. You want it to be incredibly memorable and strong. And I don't think that like she will stand up to the test of time the way Killmonger has. Right. Um, but I, I I don't I don't really have a problem with her. Um, I've been saying for as long as we've been in this podcast that like Marvel one of the strengths of Marvel movies is they they give you a villain. That villain is what they are. They're often very simple. But the the villain is there to enhance the character of the hero, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, they're they're often not really they're a vehicle for the hero to learn things. They're not really the focus of the movie. So it's not that the villains are bad; they just serve a certain purpose in the story. And there are there are exceptions, and those exceptions are notable because they are like intense characters, like Thanos, like Killmonger. Mm-hmm. I think Darbin functions in that same old school way of thinking about Marvel villains, where it's like the Marvel villains fairly cut and paste. Like it's it's not like it doesn't have to be per it doesn't have to be the focus of the movie. It doesn't have to be some amazing thing. It just has to function to serve the story of the other characters to ha- learn their lessons or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I definitely think she f- pulls that off well. As for this movie being forgettable, uh, again, I think like. What Andre says about it is true. 
but I understand why people think that this is not as memorable as some, you know, it's not going to be as memorable as some Marvel movies, but it's more memorable than others, I guess. Well, we it's talked about that middle. last week. There's so many, there's a lot of middle standing movies. Yeah. And I think like you just have to hit a good, like strong hit. You don't have to always make them grand slams, home runs. Like if you get strong movies and then when you get to the home runs that they, they, they work, you know, um, and I think this is a this is just a really solid outing. Mm-hmm. It's not an end game, but it's like you know, it's not a Thor: The Dark World. Like it's, it's like right, right. somewhere in there in that spectrum, and it's an Ant Man and the Wasp. <laughs> yeah, 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 maybe. And I and I like I like Ant Man and the Wasp. I like this mm-hmm. one. I like them both. Um, uh, Katie Lizbeth, one of our patrons, says, "Jam uh, with the atmosphere stealing bit in the Marvels." Uh, I just think of this, and she. <laughs> Uh, sent a link to the YouTube video of Spaceballs, where uh, they're stealing the atmosphere um, mm. with a with a giant vacuum cleaner. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> the the uh, the like Star Destroyer or whatever they're on um, turns it, like transforms becomes a transformer as they say in the movie and like uses a vacuum cleaner to uh, suck out the air from whatever the Alderaan equivalent. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Pretty good, pretty good. I definitely thought of that, and like, don't think I remembered what I, I remembered the vacuum cleaner, but I couldn't remember what movie it was from, which is so silly. <laughs> anyway, before we move on to the next one, I think we need to talk about nuts. dot com. I mean, I could talk about nuts all day. I I I know you could. I know you could. It's because they were very, very, very uh, good tasting. Is what you mean, right? They Ashley? were delicious nuts. <laughs> They were, they were indeed. Uh, yeah, I, I seriously think these are a great, uh, a great product. Um, nuts dot com. They sell all kinds of like nuts and uh, like dried fruit and just like great snack foods. My secret diet is so whenever you're hungry, like you're mm-hmm. like I'm starving, I need to eat something. You just eat a handful of cashews and you drink a whole glass of water. And I'm yes. telling you, you will feel full. So getting all these these nuts we got um the cashews we got uh the bourbon pecans which are amazing Mm -hmm. uh almonds but yeah i love the cashews because that's yeah i love the dried mango i think jeff mentioned it last episode and i hadn't received mine yet and uh uh, last time we talked about nuts.com and like the dried mango is like so good it felt like fruit by the foot but healthier (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> see i don't like any healthy snacks i, I was like give me all of the salty nuts <laughs> <laughs> well i i love them i love them um and i really do think it's a great thing right now like the holidays are here and it's a really cool product to be able to just like you know you know like you find your a great restaurant and you share it with a friend i feel like nuts.com oh, yeah. is like that where you like you can find these really cool snacks like the bourbon pecans yeah they have everything butterscotch fudge licorice jawbreakers jelly beans even the those root beer barrels from when we were little kids. Yes, yes. <laughs> so all these, like, whether it's something nostalgic that you, like, had a connection with when you were f- kids or, like, whether it's something new and interesting that you want your friend to try, like, you think they'd like. Like, I think these are a really freaking great holiday gift. Um, and you can just send these through the mail to friends you don't even have close. Um, it's just a really great idea for, for the holidays. And, you know, it's it's like that restaurant thing where you find that snack that someone loves and you share mm-hmm. it with them and you'll always be the person who shared that snack with them. You know, it's good. And then you always know what to get people. That's right. That's right. Uh, nuts.com is a one-stop shop for freshly roasted nuts, dried fruit, sweets, uh, pantry staples like specialty flowers and more. Uh, their wide selection means there is something for everyone. At nuts.com, quality is a top priority. They roast their nuts and pop their corn the same day it ships, so they reach you deliciously fresh. Satisfaction is guaranteed. That is so freaking cool. The like. Yeah. Yeah. You buy I, I, I buy nuts all the time just like at a gas station and there's just no no telling <laughs> how long those nuts have been sitting there at the gas station. Right now, nuts.com is offering new customers a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders of $29 or more at nuts.com slash MCU. So go check out all of the delicious options at nuts.com slash MCU. You'll receive a free gift and free shipping when you spend $29 or more. That's nuts.com slash MCU. Yeah, they're really good, guys. Check them out. All right, and turning back to our Marvel's feedback, uh, well, let's hit this uh, Todd Fitzhugh, I think, I believe, sent in a voicemail. You ready for that? 
Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Yo, yo, what's good? Matt, Jeff and Ashley, Todd here. Um, I just thought I'd leave you a quick review of the Marvels because I went and saw it tonight with my daughter at the cinema and overall, I really enjoyed it. I'm not too sure what I was expecting, but it was definitely more entertaining than I thought it was going to be. So I've, I've written down a couple of bullet points because I know I do waffle on in my audio clips and I want to try and keep it short. So uh, character-wise, really love Miss Marvel again. I thought she was just so joyful and innocent when she was on the screen, uh, portrayed amazingly by Mom Villani, I thought. Um, yeah, so she was all good. Uh, Monica Rambo, I thought she was pretty decent. I liked her powers. Captain Marvel, I've never been a massive fan of Captain Marvel before this, and I'm still not after it, to be honest. There was nothing about a character that sort of made me warm to her any more than I had done. Um, I don't know what you guys thought, but Nick Fury just seemed a bit strange. It was like the events of Secret Invasion had never happened. He didn't seem to be jaded at all by it. Uh, his wife wasn't anywhere to be seen on the ship. I mean, it, I, th- I think we all agreed, didn't we, that Secret Invasion led on to the Marvels, but it was just like it had never happened. It was all a bit strange. But, you know, it was good to have him there and uh, nevertheless. I like the guest appearances. I thought it was really great to see Valkyrie again. Um, did we know she could summon the Bifrost? Uh, but it seems like she can now. It doesn't look... Um, as far as we know, there wasn't like a new Heimdall, was there, that was controlling it. So I assume it was her. So that's quite big. And um, we know Scrolls or an Asgard. Um, I really like the appearance of Kate Bishop. Again, I thought Miss Marvel was really good. Her sort of doing a Nick Fury recruiting out of the shadows bit. That cracked me right up. Um, and now we know we get Young Avengers, finally. There's been rumours of that. And now that's officially confirmed. So... That's something to look forward to. And yeah, as for the mid credit scene, I must admit I'm not a massive X-Men fan. Um, so I wasn't even quite sure who that character was uh, when uh, Monica Rambo woke up. But I've since looked and it's someone called The Beast. And the people behind me in the cinema seem to know. They was all cheering and whooping. Um, I saw the X on the door that was pretty cool. And um, I don't quite know. That was that. Monica's mum in that in that mid credit scene, and if so, who is she portraying from the X Men? I was a bit confused about that, um, but that's pretty cool, you know. We're finally getting the X Men, so that's all good. Anyway, I am now going to watch Loki, so I'm going to be quiet now. And uh, yeah, keep up the good work. I'll speak to you soon, guys. Take care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we did. It was uh, she was binary. Uh, playing a character called Binary from the comics, but I don't think she's necessarily an X Men in comics. Uh, it's just the ma- fact that like she's a good guy. The X Men work with all kinds of people throughout. Yeah, everybody is an X Men and not an X Men the same way that right. everybody in the comics is an Avenger at some point. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and I feel like a lot of people. I mean, X Men are generally all mutants because they're like on the compound and everything, but that's not really. Like they they all work with all these other people and stuff, so it's it's. Just but we also whatever. don't know if in those universes more people are mutants that aren't sure, you know, sure because now they're allowed to say it, right? And the binary powers in that universe may have come from a uh, you know uh, a mutant ability yeah. X gene. The one that really stood out about uh, Todd's feedback to me was the the call out of Nick Fury. Um, yeah, it's yeah. really frustrating the way they handled Nick Fury's character. Um, it's like this makes the uh, secret invasion worse. Like, yeah, you like can't just worse. ignore it just because yeah. people didn't like it, or mm-hmm. to ignore it completely is kind of like a cop out. I don't know. Yeah, it really is. And the whole point of the end of that thing was how important his wife was to him. And then they had so. So here's my theory. I think they edited it out, which sucks because like. It should have been a big deal, but I think I think just like you had to watch WandaVision to really understand uh, Multiverse of Madness and who the children were and all that stuff, Right. I think this was supposed to be, you have to have watched Secret Invasion to know his wife, and I think, my theory, is either she was going to die or come very close to death, because, like, 
the whole thing at the end of Secret Invasion was he was like, hey, I need your help because they're doing – the Kree and the Skrull are about to have some peace talks – and I need your help, and you you should be a part of it. And then they cut to that scene, and it is the Kree and the Skrull having peace talks. Like, mm-hmm. I'm assuming she was originally in that scene in some version of this plan. Yeah. But she wasn't, that I could tell. Oh. Or at mm-hmm. least in, if she was, they never focused on her. Um, and it would have been... like, And then that world gets attacked. Like, that would have made the story really personal to Fury if, like, either his wife died or almost died there on that planet. Um mm. Like, I think that would have made the movie have a lot more weight. Just like, I, I, I feel like there had to be a version of this movie that had that in it and then had a mm-hmm. little bit more focus on the after effects of um, Miss Marvel seeing Captain Marvel abandon all those people. Because, yeah. like, that was such a big, heavy, weighty thing that happened. And it feels like there was probably a scene or two after that where we have to, like, you know, the down point of the movie where. Nick has either lost his wife or is is dealing with her in a hospital bed or something. Um, right. And Amon Vellani is having these, like, crisis of faith of whether she really believes in Captain Marvel. And it feels like they just cut that out. And it really pisses me off because I feel like this is the same stuff we talked about a lot with um, Ra- uh, Thor, Thor, the last Love and Thunder. I almost called it Ragnarok. But Love and Thunder is, it like, the hard stuff – they cut out, which makes the whole thing be less weighty. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. it matters less when the hard stuff doesn't happen. Um, and like the fact that he kills like you know two gods in the movie feels really short and really like truncated. And they apparently cut a lot of that out from what we understand. And like this feels the same way. Like there was some harder stuff in this movie. It like clearly based on how Secret Invasion ended and this this goes, there had to have been harder stuff with Fury, and I feel like they really skipped over. And what I'm wondering is like when they realized Secret Invasion was bad, they realized they couldn't rely on the audience to know who Fury's wife was. Right. And like it would be weird if suddenly we find out he has a, a scroll wife we've never heard of. Yeah, yeah. And no, so yeah. since nobody liked the movie, they decided to ignore it. So they decided to ex- excise those scenes and went with those scenes because they couldn't cut around it. I'm wondering if a bunch of the character development for Miss Marvel and Carol Danvers went away when they pulled that out. Like that's my that's what I'm I'm just kind of theorizing right now. Yeah. But yeah, it pisses me off because it does feel like there was something much heavier happening in this movie that just went away. Yeah. He was just too, like, cool about yeah. everything, acting like nothing was going on. Well, that's the other thing is if they left that stuff in, like, if they had a really big, heavy thing happen to him in the middle of this movie, and then at the end of the movie, he's still running around kind of jokingly swallowing up people with flurkins and playing with uh, the cons, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It would have well, felt Well, and you'd think there's silly. a huge problem going on now with people going after anyone who's alien on be after what the president said at the end and absolutely doesn't seem like anybody cares so yeah 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 why like, should we <laughs> fury doesn't seem to talk about that at all um i do think we're building to something there i think we're building we're pro you know we, we talk about this stuff all the time like the thunderbolts are going to be a thing and they're going to be probably working in america's interest i'm guessing because mm-hmm. they're working under val and then America is talking about how they don't want any aliens on Earth. And then you've got this alternate team of younger people that are going to be caring for aliens. And it's going to be a very, like, that story could get heavy-handed quick, I think. But, like, I think it's going to yeah. be a very, like, the youth will lead us to be a little less, like, xenophobic. You know what I mean? Well, I couldn't see how Bucky would have a problem with. I don't know. Bucky. He's from a different time, you know? We always joke about... <laughs> We always joke about how, like, uh, <laughs> Steve Rogers probably had some problematic views when he showed up in the 2000s. Yeah, I'm just joking. Yeah. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a good point. Like, I can't imagine some of our... But that's the thing. Like, I think the Thunderbolts is going to have some division on it. You know what I mean? Like, they'll, mm-hmm. they'll probably be planning for it to be one thing, and I'm guessing at some point Bucky will leave the team if, if things go really south, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, and it'll it'll sort of be like a civil war thing where like it's the villains and who's really going to be like who's going to stay a villain and who's going to actually like reform and choose to do the right thing and yeah yeah I I, just, I can kind of see a story building there with like that and the young Avengers and the young Avengers opposing that you know 
Mm-hmm. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's not it at all. I, I hope that it doesn't do that. It'll get too campy if it's the Young Avengers against the Thunderbolts. Maybe. It, it just depends. Because they're not they're going to pull their punches, and that's not what... I don't want the Thunderbolts to be dulled down with children. Yeah. Yeah, it just depends on how, how it's handled, I guess, for me. I'm okay with it if it's handled right. <laughs> I just can't see how they would be able to do it right or seriously, because they're not going to have them really hurt any of the kids. So. Well, it's, it's kind of like when you look at movies these days, or these days, it's like the 90s, but like when they included Robin in like the 90s movies, not that they did that well, but um, like the Robins these days tend to be older. You know what I mean? So I feel like these young, these are young Avengers, but they're in their like mid twenties. Most of them, you know, like uh, Mm -hmm. Kamala Khan's young. She's still in high school, but like most of them, I guess uh, Spider-Man's still young. Guess he's twenties. I don't know. He's going to college. He's going to college. He's 18. Like most of them are going to be early twenties before that movie comes out. I guess is what I'm getting at. So it's like, it's not going to be like kids. If they but do, did they say they're combining those two movies? No, or anything. Okay, no. good, good. I'm just throwing out like, and I don't think that's the case. I just, I'm just throwing out a thing that I see forming, like a young Avengers team is forming, and they're the whole point of that. At least it, partially in comics was that they sort of stood up when like the Dark Avengers were around, right? Maybe something I like don't that. Know. I think I think I think Jeff's told me that before. Um, okay. Up next, Sarah West, one of our patrons, says, Hey, Jam, uh, just had a quick thought that I'd love your opinion on in regards to the Marvels. There was a moment during the movie when Monica rises up out of the floor, and I very distinctly remember thinking to myself, I wonder if we get an X-Men, Monica could double as Kitty Pride." Uh, I know the reasoning is different, but the ability to move through walls and ceilings slash floor is Kitty Pride's thing. Um, well, lo and behold, uh, we got the mutants, and it's not Carol or Kamala in their universe, it's Monica. Do you think there's any chance that Monica will sub in as Kitty in the future? She never did name herself in the Marvels, so for right now, she simply is who she chooses to be. Any thoughts? Keep jamming on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I know. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think. I mean, clearly the power set can has some similarities. It's just that. I mean, well, Kitty sure. can't fly. Kitty can't, you know, shoot lightning bolts. She can't read. Hundred percent. I mean, Monica takes in power and re blasts it out or whatever. It's it's their powers are very different. Hundred percent. And the other big thing is just like you don't. So, like, if there's some iconic X-Man moment that they need a character to do a pass-through-someone thing, I could see them doing that sort of a thing. Like, like it, inserting her as, like, a, a tool to do the same job that Kitty Pride did at some point. Right. Like, in Days of Future Past, when they used Kitty Pride to go back into the past. Yeah. I'm like, her powers have absolutely nothing to do with this. Okay, Fox. Sure, exactly. why not? That was some of the, that was some of the dumbest it stuff. It was so dumb. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> I, th- I, think, I think we talked about it a good bit on our coverage on Binger's Assemble. <laughs> but, but the bigger point, I think, is that like just inserting her in the place of Kitty Pride would be weird because Kitty Pride is a beloved character who has her own- Yeah, like, everybody loves Shadowcat. Yeah, he has just his own personality and story and backstory and all that. So like- I don't think they would just like replace that character. Now, if they just get to a point where they need that power set, sure, they could use that power set to do an iconic moment that Kitty Pride did in comics. But like, I don't see them replacing in any any kind of character way, any kind of broader way. Yeah. Um. But yeah, thanks, Sarah. Yeah. Uh, up next, one of our patrons, the Blurred Wire, says, "Miss Marvel feedback. What's what is up, pandas? I actually loved the Marvels." It made a lot of sense and tied up a lot of loose ends we needed answers to, like Carol's 30-year absence, the Bengals being quantum bands, and how their power got entangled. I laughed so hard when Kamala's family was fighting the Kree and when Kamala recruited Kate Bishop, Nick Fury style. (laughs) This movie does bring up a few questions, though. Shouldn't the quantum bands have taken Monica Rambeau to the clandestine dimension from Miss Marvel? 
uh, is Monica Rambeau now trapped on Earth 838, potentially before Scarlet Witch killed the Illuminati? Or is she in the Fox X-Men timeline uh, that takes place after they repaired in, in Days of Future Past? Overall, great film that I'm definitely going to see again. Um, um, yeah. I don't think she's on 838 because uh, that Captain Marvel was Monica Rambeau in 838, and she was not. Monica Rambeau was binary on this timeline. Yes. Uh, I, I agree. So I don't think it's 838. Unless, of course... Those names sometimes change. Sometimes they become this, then that, then this, or whatever. I don't know. Um, I was so soon to that one. I just don't think that. Yeah, I, I agree. That's too confusing. Well, and like he, uh, like he said, it would have to be before that because she dies, I believe, right? Um, I mean, I guess so. We just see the thing fall on her. And if she's Captain Marvel, you would think that that wouldn't have killed her, but I don't know. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's, uh, that's we, I think we argued about that during the, or like, like discussed that during the uh, cast. <laughs> so if I had to guess, I think it's the, X-Men Fox universe that is fixed after Days of Future Past. But again, the the whole that whole universe is very confusing. So uh whether whether it's exactly that or this is just like a third multiverse that we don't know about where like things the X-Men also exist and just have similarities, kind of like the 838 universe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I think if anything, like I can't imagine they're well, <laughs> I was gonna say I can't imagine they're gonna do a good job with making it line up per properly with those right. with those movies because those movies are so shifty but all they really have to line up with is that last scene of days of future past like that's all we really know that happened in that universe because yeah. everything else he changed so everything yeah. from those movies is different except who the characters are and how that last scene rolled out mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. could be really any of those any of those options i don't know if i have a strong opinion either way <laughs> Um, let's do a couple more. We got th- that's all our patron stuff. We're gonna get to some actual uh, regular emailers. How about it? <laughs> wow. Um, let's see. Ariel Carmen says, "Hi Matt, Jeff, and Ashley. I am a long time." Lurker, but first time commenter of the cast. I have been listening to you guys since before Infinity War came out and have been a patron for the last year or so. I always had stuff to say while I was listening, but never wrote anything down and forgot uh, what I had to say by the end of the cast. Haha. Ha. Um, we, <laughs> we have some people who just like straight up live tweet the podcast they're just like you can tell like they're just like each paragraph is a response to like a different thing yeah um (laughs) but thank you Errol, for finally writing in uh one thing i have also wanted to say is ashley i too suffer from the bad wig affliction um i'm assuming she means that people People with bad wigs oh yeah you noticed people with bad wigs she's not accusing you of having bad wigs (laughs) no (laughs) Or saying, if she was accusing me, she's saying that she has the same thing, but that is yeah. not what we're talking about. I know, I'm just teasing. No, we, we don't like a hard front wig. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me neither. Whatever that means. Uh, Ariel continues. Lace, lace fronts for life. <laughs> <laughs> Ariel continues, and it really bothers me when I see a cap, crap wig on an actor. Uh, I thought she was saying cap, and I was like, Can cap wear a wig? Um, okay. Also, something I have been wondering for a long time, is your last name actually Coffin? Because if it is, that's amazing and very fitting since you really like horror. Uh, Yes, it is, legally. Uh, I married into it. Mm. So, yeah, I got very lucky. Now we see why you married Ken, actually. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, no, my maiden maiden name is Castles. Yeah, which is which still is crazy. <laughs> still awesome. Fucking Frank over here. She she has a freaking castles and then a coffin. Like yeah. I know, I said we should just hyphenate and be Game of Thrones characters. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, my feedback comes on the heels of watching the Marvels. I have heard for years that people really dislike Brie Larson and by extension Carol Danvers as a character. I don't understand this because I don't think Brie ever really said anything offensive, so I don't know why people harp on that. Also, regardless of the actor, she plays Carol masterfully. I don't want to believe that this is just because she is strong, a strong female character and that men folk are butthurt. 
So I have tried to rationalize it. It goes back farther than the fact that she's just a, a strong female character. She's just been very outspoken for women's rights and, and the Me Too movement and stuff like that. Because mm-hmm. I remember distinctly uh, something had happened. Uh, oh, Casey Affleck was accused of you know, sexual, uh, whatever. He got Me Too'd really bad. He was one of the first ones. And um, that year he won Best Oscar and she had just been in a movie about being kidnapped and assaulted and, you know, held in... uh, Did you see Room? No, I know it's just a great... I haven't seen it. So, yeah, she was being kept in somebody's, you know, like garage for years and the guy, you know, got her pregnant and it's a very heavy movie. Mm -hmm. So just winning that the year before and then having to hand him the Oscar, you know, she made a face. She didn't clap for him or whatever and people... That's kind of when it started. I think she was doing the right thing, you know, but people don't like that. And then she didn't back down from it and yeah. didn't stop talking about it and like awareness and stuff. So, yes, it is butthurt people. Yeah, it, it is. And, and, and like, like, and, and I always try to be like all inclusive that there are people who don't like her acting for her acting sake or whatever. Yeah, like Todd. I think Todd's a nice guy. I don't know him. Right. But, you Todd, know, Todd, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe Todd, anything. you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I don't, I don't want to claim that like every person who says they don't, aren't a fan of Carol Danvers is a racist, uh, but, le- <laughs> sorry, is a well, se- not ra- se- sexist. You are really just racist. trying to get us that five star review. Right? Yeah, I'm trying to get this story. <laughs> yes. Bringing it back up, Ashley. Bringing it back oh, up on the God. cast. Just stop saying the R word. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I try. I try. Uh, that was one of our, er, that was an early uh, bad review we got for saying the R word. It, um, <laughs> yeah, Jeff. Jeff. He's not here to defend himself. Not here to defend himself. Throw, <laughs> throw him under the bus this time. You should show up to defend yourself, bud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, um, but uh no, uh, last week I, I joke I joked about not liking. Uh, well, I, off cast I joked about not liking the Pedro Pascal possible casting because he wasn't white, and people have been joking about it in the Stranded Panda chat. Someone said uh, uh, that they were gonna give us a five star review and say like, "Come for the great Marvel content, stay for the racism" or something. Um, oh wow! Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> it's, it's very funny. One of our mods had to take down something on the uh, on our Facebook chat because they put like. Oh God, Reed, Reed Ricardo or something like? Am I gonna oh. have to call him Reed Ricardo? Yeah, Ooh, yeah, yeah that wasn't good. That's why that's good not for the great, mods. Guys. Good, 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 good I job. I found mods. out about that later and was like, whoa, yeah, <laughs> oh, good job, mods. And and people are always uh, <laughs> saying that they really like the community, and it is really because we really try to keep that kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, man, I ruled that it. page with an iron fist. Yes, um, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, but but anyway, so. The sexism of it all with Captain Marvel, I think it's true. I think people don't like her because of her like personal stances in life, uh, and also because the Captain Marvel character is so strong. And like, it does. It, she's also strong in a way that doesn't need to conform personality wise. Like, this is something that's just true, and it's it sucks. But like most characters that are female in movies, most female characters have to, like, they're strong, but they still have to have kind of a quirky personality. You know what I mean? Like, if you give give a woman power in a movie, she has to be sort of apologetic about it for it to be palatable uh, Mm -hmm. to those kinds of toxic masculine folks. And like, Captain Marvel is not that. Captain Marvel no. is powerful and unapologetic. And the entire point of the first Captain Marvel movie is for her to learn to be unapologetic about her powers. And like right. that is a beautiful message and women should not be apologetic about their power, um, about right. their strengths, about their talents. They should wear them on their sleeves and be proud of them, who they are. Um, and that's like a great message of, of that movie. Unfortunately, when we do, this is what happens. Yes. <laughs> I, I, and, and yeah, I, and I do think that like... And I mean, I'm I'm even I'm guilty of this next part, and it, and this is probably a little. There's probably some internalized sex. I don't know about sexism exactly, but like this, there's some internalized um, lack of understanding. Because when I watch the Captain Marvel movie, uh, I don't like it as much as a lot of the the uh, uh, our, our female listeners that have written in and how much they love yeah. that movie. It's not my favorite. 
and well, I'm sure. a female. I think there is something. <laughs> you know, like yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I get that. Like, I, like, it doesn't have to be. You don't have to like it if you're a lady. Like, it's great. Um, but what my point is that, like, I, I do think there's a lack of understanding that I have. The type of gaslighting she goes through in that movie, and the type yes. of like, um, the type of things she is going through and she conquers in that movie are not things that I have a personal experience with. So they don't hit me as hard, especially when I first watched the movie. I don't, I think some of that kind of like was over my head and like, didn't really right, understand right. it fully. So, and that's why the movie's important is to, to show other people that experience that may not have it. Uh, that's one of the reasons. And then to allow women to see themselves reflected, like it's important, it's an important movie. Um, mm-hmm. But because of my lack of the same experience, that's part of why I didn't like it as much. You know what I mean? Um, right. And like, I need, like, it's, but it's good for me to watch movies that I don't fully understand so I can understand like, other experiences. Anyway. Yeah. So there's varying levels of sexism happening. Well, it's, it's funny when people say stuff like that. It's like, because like, I don't know what it's like to be an African king of Wakanda and stuff like that, but I can still understand what the movie's about and like it. I don't, you know, understand exactly what it means to, have certain other, you know, other movies, yeah. things that are going on there. Just, you know, I don't know. A hundred percent. Um, and I think that's, there's a, there's a, there's a definitely, and this is why I said like, there is some, not necessarily unexamined cause I'm examining it, but like there is some actual, I think there is some like underlying sexism with me when I first did, when I, my first experience of that movie, because like I didn't get it. You know what I mean? And like, it's like, mm-hmm. it like it didn't hit me the same because I didn't have that experience. And there, there wasn't anything like meant, but it's, it's a little bit of just white male privilege when you see something like that and you go, wait, all movies are supposed to be for me. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. I'm so used to all movies being reflected through a lens that is mine, that is, that I connect with on every level that when I see a Captain Marvel and it's so not, then it takes me a few viewings or takes me hearing from the audience that we have and takes me hearing from female listeners who like loved it and how much it meant to them to understand mm-hmm. it fully. And I think that's like, that's kind of awesome that it's that, that, that power of it. But I definitely like, had yeah. to, I had to go through that process myself. That's funny. I, I kind of remember our discussion after house of the dragon. Um, there was just little things with that that was kind of a little bit similar. We were having this conversation. I was like, no, no, she's ripping her fingers apart because she doesn't have any other control of like her life and stuff. And it mm. is funny how we, we, you know, we have those little, those yeah. little things. So yeah, yeah. coming on Absolutely. House of the Dragon this year. So get ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, I can't wait to talk about that movie, that show. Mm-hmm. It's really exciting. Um, okay. Continuing uh, Ariel's feedback. Uh, Do they dislike Carol because she doesn't have a personality? Uh, I heard this before. I said that before. Um, We just, yeah. Yeah, this is, well, it's interesting because I I can clarify kind of what I got out of that. But uh, uh, I don't get, I don't get it. Especially after this movie, Carol is dry, sarcastic, and emotionally guarded, but also caring and selfless. How can anyone say she has no personality? Her character is this movie uh, further solidified this for me. Her character in this movie further solidified this for uh, in for me. It makes me so sad that people aren't flocking to theaters like they were post COVID um, because this was a really solid MCU film. What do you guys think about this? Uh, thank you so much for doing this podcast. It really brightens my week. Uh, please never stop. Uh, love you guys, 3000 Squared. Ariel. Love that. Yeah. I think we hit on a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, this last one. But yeah. The, her emotion, like her personality, I don't think she was supposed to kind of have one in the first one because hers has been so pulled out of her and molded exactly. over and put back in and, you know. Exactly. Mind control. Yeah. Well, and, and, and that's something that I connect with a lot in a lot of stories, but I didn't see it in that one like I should have. And it's so clear looking at it now. But like I said at the time, it was a very like bold choice because basically they were doing the character story in reverse. Like you didn't really get a sense of her character until the very end of the movie and that in the end, the movie's over. But the whole right. point of the movie is – She's living an experience that a lot of women are familiar with, where her edges are being sanded down. She's being changed. She's being forced to conform uh, and forced to hide her power and forced to hide who she Mm -hmm. is 
forced to keep her emotions under control, forced fall to, in line. Yeah, fall just in line. Follow what you're told. Exactly. And I have my own experiences of that, mm-hmm. um, but they're different from you know the 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 experience of many women and like. I, I think that that's what, like, that's what she just said is what I said when I first saw the movie. And like, I, now looking back, I was just, I was wrong. And like, it's, uh, it's, yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly, but that, that is our thoughts <laughs> on it. I don't know if we, we really answered that question, but like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to answer it for people who are just being bigots. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's the, that's the slippery slope of the. It's so it's so so hard. It's such a it's such a riddle and hard to untangle because like, think about my experience with that movie, and I, I'm still like, let's let's talk about this uh, more through my my lens. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, <laughs> but like, people that are being sexist need to be stood up to. But sometimes people, it like drives them further into their like, no, I don't feel that way. I feel this way completely. Like when I, when I felt that way, when I first saw the movie, um, it did not feel like sexism. It felt like, oh, Marvel just made a weird decision with this character. Right. But it was like unexamined, you know? And Mm -hmm. it's like, how do you keep people from being defensive while standing up to sexism? Because if you push so hard on a guy like that sometimes it drives them the other way and they're like no right right you guys are right and it's just such a screwed up system to have to uh and i think the, the answer is we all have to be more thoughtful and examine our own biases and try to never try to never like bunker down in an opinion to the point that you can't be, have your mind changed and have your thoughts re-examined. But like, that's just hard. Cause that's just not the way the world is. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's one of the hardest things that, you know, we have to deal with as a society. So, yeah. you know, yep, yep, it's yep. the internet doesn't help. Yeah. So true. Okay. On that heavy topic, let's take a quick break and be right back with uh, (laughs) more uh, feedback right after this. And we's back. And we're back. (laughs) Uh, We got Julian Kiss says, hi, Jam. Yes, I'm from Austria. That's why you gave me the Arnold accent. He's talking about a previous email. (laughs) Hi, Jam. (laughs) Hi. Hi, Jam. Hi, Jam. Austria. <laughs> uh, I just have to say, I really love the Marvels. It's really sad that it's getting so much hate. Also, people have been shipping Valkyrie and Carol for a while, so I think their interaction was a nod to that. Uh, I hope it will go somewhere. As a gay guy, I still feel very underrepresented in the MCU, so bring on the queerness. Uh, but it sadly seems like people still are not open-minded enough uh, when you look in the comment sections online. Do not look at the comment sections, or you think that there is no hope for humans as uh, Yeah, as at is. all, at all. Yeah. <laughs> people that are vocal online are not normal people. Like, people no. that are that vocal and that, and say things that are that controversial to, they're not normal people. So we can no. all just have a little bit of, like like solace in the fact that they're just not normal. Those are the outliers. They want you to, they're posting it because they don't have any friends and they want you to fight with them. Like I have to stop myself from commenting back because I'm like, oh, that's just what they want. They want me to fight with them and I want to fight with everybody, but I don't. I really try not to, like I'll type it out maybe two or three times and delete it just so I get it out there because I don't want to give them that power of the power that you're giving them is just interacting back with them. They might not even believe what they're saying, but they just want the fight. Yeah. It's sick. It's sick. It is sick people. It it is (laughs) sick. It is sick. I, it's tough because like, I want to be the guy who's like, I want to engage with all people who are coming in good faith. You know what I mean? Like, and that's what you're saying. You're saying these people are not in good faith. And I think that's sometimes true, but it's sometimes not. And it's like just so hard to find the line where like you engage enough with someone and it's just like, I've, I've done it a lot, especially a few years ago when things were really, really, um, 
like during Black Lives Matter and um, like the, the the major Black Lives Matter movements and marches, like mm-hmm. there was, I did a lot of online engagement and just trying to like be very like, hey, let me have this logical discussion with you about you know your thoughts and and like sometimes those went okay and sometimes it just like finally came down to oh you're just trolling, you know what I mean? It's just exactly, so hard. Yeah. So we can just put it out into the world what we can, and you can't like. Uh, I don't know. Can't well, let it get it, you down. It's almost even like the theme of this movie. It's like treating people like they're human beings. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I just said like three times. So this is perfect. Some guy who I don't know tagged me on Twitter to tell me that I am so annoying on the podcast. I say like too many times and he counted them and this and that. DM me. Like, why are you? You don't need to publicly shame me for something uh, like that. Yeah. Because now it's in my head. And it was during the Loki cast. I was exhausted during that cast, mm-hmm. which is why I worry. I get worried about doing casts so late when I'm tired because I know I'm not doing 110%. But I would never publicly try to shame somebody about that. Send a DM, you know, even if you think you're being nice, it's not nice to publicly say that, like to yeah. tell people you know, criticisms like that. It's just awful. Yeah. People see you as a, like, they see hosts of a show as a like public figure that they can say the thing about because they should have tough enough skin. But like, yeah, especially at our level, like we're just, we're small time podcasters just yeah. doing this thing. And it like, gets in my yeah, head, you know? Absolutely. It does. It gets in my head. Every too, time that like, I've said, like, I've been like a little, I'm like, am I saying it too much now? I right, don't know. Right. Now I'm freaking myself out yeah. about it. And I don't like coming into it. And like is just a word that you say so much, God yeah. damn it. <laughs> it, it. You know, and it's part of how you talk. And the people that are here uh, on this podcast, I think, are here to ha- have people – they're here to listen to people have conversations that are like real, normal people have conversations. And right. like – you have friends you enjoy talking to and like other friends you don't. And like, if we're, if you don't like the kind of content we're creating, because even if it's just because we're annoying as people, there are lots of podcasts talking about uh, Marvel and such. Um, yeah. We're, we're just one and we're just fans. And, you know, uh, if people don't like uh, the way that we handle it, they can, they can go get another one. They don't have to criticize it in that way and and criticize uh, our hosts, especially publicly, like you said. So I'm sorry that happened. That's a, yeah. I deal with it a lot. Yeah. I know. I know. And I, and I'm, I'm a little more, I don't tend to have a problem like putting something aside. Like whenever I hear some sort of criticism about me, um, I generally take it in as like, okay, that's one point of information. There's, you know, we get like uh, about 70,000 unique people listening every month. So Mm -hmm. like 70,000 people listening, one person said it. Okay. There's probably, if one person said it, there's probably a hundred thinking it. Right. Okay. Two people said it. Okay. Now I'm starting to go, okay, maybe I, maybe I should work on me. Yeah. Like I started, when it starts to build up, you know what I mean? That's when I start going like, okay, 30 people are saying the thing I messed up on the last podcast. (laughs) I'll, I'll try to like work on that thing. But like when it's one guy, I'm like, no, nah, you're not. You're not winning my day. Like you unless you're telling it. me to stop talking about multiverse of madness, which I will never ever stop. <laughs> <laughs> you got your mention in for the day. I don't, yep. Boo. <laughs> Quotas. I would like the Val- Valkyrie and Carol thing. I think that would be really fun, and I do agree with him. I mean, I feel like the MCU and Disney tried to come out to be like, oh, we're going to have queer characters and we're going to do this, but it's never something that they've showcased in the front. If anything, you see a kiss between queer characters. It's kind of in the background or blown over or. It's it's a comment or it's this or yeah. that, like what they did with Loki. So it's like, oh, look at us. We're here. We're doing the work. We're doing the good things. We're doing it. Don't you see? Give mm-hmm. us credit, you know, and it's still just not there enough. So I completely agree with Julian. Yeah. I I, I, I ship it. I think it's cool. Um, yeah. You know, I don't, I, I, like, I don't know if that's what they're going for, but they're definitely, there's definitely a, a tight affection and at least friendship between them. I'm just excited for Rogue. I mean, I, I like Carol. I do too. Yeah. But Rogue has always been my favorite. And I'm just waiting for her to be like, hey, girl. Mm-hmm. Just, I mean, I don't want to spoil it for anybody. So I'm not going to say anything more than that. But if they choose to do something like that, God, it, that would be so crazy. Yeah. That whatever movie or something they choose to do it in. Yeah, it really would. And it would be at this point, Carol is an established enough character that that would really like 
It would hit. It would hit hard. And like, that's the it thing. It would. Like, care, and the fact that she's been like for 30 years on this uh, quest and like, mm-hmm. it just feels like it would be a big deal. Even though Carol has not been my traditionally my favorite character, um, just getting this chance to return to her and really live in her world for a minute and find out what she's been up to. Like she's so lonely. <laughs> yeah. And like her motivations for being away and all that stuff. It's just it's really good. And like they did a good job with it. And I now am more invested in the Captain Marvel character than I have been in the past. And like mm-hmm. I really, really want um, it's 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 interesting because that you know like we just talked about that first movie like we don't get to know her that well because it's all about she doesn't know who she is and then you know who, then she knows who she is and now the entire story of the second movie is she was scared to show who she is to other people um, right and I think that's a big part of her character is just this like knowing who she is learning to share it being herself. Um, and how hard that is and how many structures have been built to keep her from doing that. And this like guilt and shame around her experiences. And like, I, I feel that, man, I, I think that's such a important story and so cool. Um, but like, yeah, it's, it's it, like, it's getting to the point now though, what I really care about her character. And if she shows up when she, when she shows up in the next big Avengers crossover, like mm-hmm. she's going to have a lot of weight to her character, similar to how I felt about like Dr. Strange or, you know, Cap or Tony showing up. Like she's starting to really feel lived in. I think this yeah. movie kind of like tipped it for me. Cause like you had that first movie where we didn't really get to know her that well. And then the other appearances have been so brief that this one, yeah. this one feels like, okay, I'm, I, I, I know her now, you know? And I will say my favorite stuff from her was definitely Endgame because when she shows up in Endgame and just destroys Thanos' ship, yes. I, I love I love that scene and I love the scene where she almost breaks Thanos' hand in, like in half. Mm. God, I wish she would have broke his hand. That would have been awesome. Oh, but, uh, how cool would that have I been? Was, <laughs> I was break his fucking hand. I was losing it when it. Oh God, it was so good. Um, but do you feel like they they dulled her powers down a little bit in this movie? Well. They did a clever thing. I don't know that they dulled her powers down because every time she shows up, she wrecks house in this movie. Yeah. She's always like, when when she's there, she's the most powerful thing in the room and can do crazy good things. But they did a really clever thing by making her powers be corrupted by the fact that when she uses them, she gets jumped across the universe. So that was really smart because there's multiple shots in the movie where she goes to do something and realizes, no, if I do that, I'm not going to be here. So I can't use my powers. So it was really, it was really clever because it wasn't like some, yeah, it wasn't Yonrog again, like telling her not to use her powers. It was like, she just had to be really tactical about her powers. I thought that was awesome. Yeah. It, it gave her as this really powerful being a chance to have a movie and have all the struggles of this movie and really have failures while being so powerful um, mm-hmm. without actually getting rid of her powers or anything. But as we mentioned, that might happen in the future. Um, yeah. <laughs> shh, 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 shh. I feel like we've talked about that so many times on the podcast. I don't know if that's know. a spoiler. There, in comics, there's some things happen to her. But, well, that one person didn't even know who Beast was, so. That's true. That's true. That is wild. Sh- that's wild. We, 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 we didn't mention it. I forgot. I think it was Todd. Yeah, Todd didn't yeah. know who Beast was. That's That is that's wild. mind-blowing to But me. I guess, like. We do the show. This show that we do is about They've people never who, had X-Men. Well, exactly. This show, our podcast is about people who follow the MCU. And so there's people that had gotten into all this stuff over the last 15 years who never watched all the X-Men movies, who never read the comics, who never watched the cartoon. Like, this is, this is their first foray into Marvel. And so it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Everybody cool. who's, who wants to know or excited about the X-Men or want to know, go watch the animated show. I know the new one's coming out. I'm sure it's going to be great. It's not going to be 97 X-Men. So go watch it. I know it's on Disney Plus. And, and that's me telling you to go watch an animated mm-hmm. series. Yeah. It is everything. Yeah, it's really, really well done. Um, I'm really excited for the new one because I think it'll be, uh, I think it's going to follow in the footsteps of that one and be updated for the modern times with better animation and stuff. So mm-hmm. um, I'm I'm pumped. I'm pumped for that. I want to I want to go back and rewatch all the old ones, but it's so hard to find time to rewatch that much. I know of an old I know. older series. It's so many. Yeah, I used to have the first two episodes uh, on. VHS because I got them from Pizza Hut. 
<laughs> so, because Pizza Hut used to have the one um, arcade game in there, it was like Dazzler, it was mm-hmm. Wolverine, it was Bobby, um, Bobby Drake, and it was everybody. And yeah, when you got your personal pizza, when they were promoting that, you got the first two episodes, and I watched it over and over and over and over again. That's and then awesome. I, it took me a couple years later to be like, "Oh my god, that was the very first episodes!" Because it's the coming of Jubilee, yes, and that's the first episode. Yep, yep. I remember it well. I remember it well. Nostalgia. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, up next, Cameron Cody says, Hey, Jam, I saw the Marvels last night and loved it. I was disappointed in the lack of attendance for the showtime I had, though. My only complaint is that I wish the plot wasn't rushed. I, I would have rather added a scene where Darbin attacks Saber. Uh, do you feel the movie could have had more scenes? Can't wait to see the X-Men more and Young Avengers. Personally, I want to see the Young Avengers first. Now that we have a new version of Maria Rambo, let's hope she doesn't die like the other two so we Whoa. can have more storytelling for her. Higher, further, faster. <laughs> um. Yeah, I definitely yeah. think that it was rushed. That's like that's uh, my main yeah. complaint. Um and I do think that it has something to do with them like exors- excising some parts that weren't popular from uh Secret Invasion and also yeah. cutting out some like intense stuff that they wanted to keep the movie light and fun and they Ew. they achieved that, but like I just really tired of people flattening the tones of movies so that they only include one tone, you know. Yeah. My favorite sure. movies are all like movies where I laugh uproariously and then I'm crying a scene later. Not everyone can be guardians. <laughs> yeah. Or, or everything ever all at once. Uh Shaun of the Dead is another one of those. Like I cr- I laugh so hard and then I'm suddenly crying. Like it's it's great. I love that kind of stuff. And the Mar- Marvel has that potential and sometimes I think they truncate it to try to be appealing to more audiences and I don't think they I think they're they're appealing to more audiences, but not allowing themselves to be deeper with the audiences because they're cutting some some of those scenes that are some of the most memorable things, you know? Yeah. Mm. I still would like the uh, four-hour cut of Love and Thunder. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would too. I'd really love to see what he was going for with that. Uh, we, we didn't talk news up top at all. Um, if you want to hear more about it, go to Multiverse News. Uh, but we... Uh, uh, apparently, uh, they are working on Thor five, and Taika's not involved. There, Taika won't be involved. I saw. Uh, was was a news report this week. Um, so, what do you think of that? Think it's time? I'm okay with that. I think uh, he signed on to do a lot of different projects, and I didn't think that they were for sure doing that. That they were starting the the Thor five, hmm. but uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh oh, oh maybe they're not maybe I I may have misspoken. I just mean that like they've they're saying that if they do a Thor five it won't involve. Taika. I think he said he was tied up with movies for the next five years. Oh okay. Maybe yeah, that, maybe so that he's like signed on for projects. All right. Uh, last up, Patrick O'Reilly. If the scrolls were living on that planet, uh, what was the point of Secret Invasion? Uh, did they release the Marvels out of order? Uh, it would make sense if it came out first as. Good as the movie is, I am left with a lot of questions, looking to see what your thoughts are. Thank you for the company on these long commutes. Uh, love you 3000, Patrick O. Yeah, we were talking about that, too, when we got out. Like, oh, so the scrolls did have a planet to live on? <laughs> yeah, well, they, it seemed like a very small like outpost-type situation, because they, they were able to get them all on a few ships, supposedly. Yeah, there was supposed to be millions of displaced scrolls, right? A million at least on Earth. Yeah, at least a million on Earth, uh, but they're also like throughout the stars and different the places. Galaxies, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, it does. I mean, like, and that's the thing they're trying to establish this colony on this planet, uh, but the Cree and the Cree are like having these talks with them. But apparently, they're just they. they, they it's clearly not a safe place because the Cree showed up and just destroyed it. You know. Yeah. So I guess Earth is a place they can hide, and some of them are trying to build colonies elsewhere. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. They could just give them Thanos's planet. We've already solved this. Yeah, for sure. The garden. <laughs> yeah, maybe they're really allergic. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just give them some Zyrtec and send them to. Zyrtec sounds like an alien word anyway, so I guess give it them some sure Zyrtec does. and send them to Thanos' planet. 
Yeah, just give them nose blockers. We have to deal with it. They have to deal with it. Yeah. We all have allergies. We all have Suck allergies. Suck it up. Suck it up, scrolls. <laughs> so picky. They're so freaking picky. God, gosh darn picky. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I don't know. I don't know why it, the, the deal with that. It was very unclear because it seemed like it was a small colony, but also it did seem like it was their like a colony they were they had on that world. So they they have established some other presences other places, but I guess they just still don't find them safe. So they're hiding a lot more people, a lot more scrolls yeah. on Earth, and now even more with uh with some of them going to Asgard. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Sorry, President. Whatever your face is. Yeah, Dylan Maloney, <laughs> Dermot McDillon. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy. That guy. All right, well, guys, that's all of our uh, all of our cast today. We're going to be back uh, later this week. We'll be talking more, probably Loki feedback because there's tons of that left, and uh, and and we're going to be having lots of things to talk about and some news um, to talk about too. So, uh, uh, yeah, we'll be back soon. We love you very much. Peace. Until next time, true believers. Hey, you just listened to the Marvel Cinematic Universe podcast from Stranded Panda. I really hope you liked it. Let me just say a big thank you to all of our supporters on patreon.com slash mcucast. You are the lifeblood of our little operation here. And a huge, huge thank you to our insanely generous Illuminati tier patrons, Walter Kreisky III, Lieutenant Bongo, and Jazz Viz. You guys are amazing. If you'd like to see our beautiful faces, you can catch a video version of many of our episodes at youtube.com slash strandedpanda. Love you 3000, my friends.